Um, all right. Well, I mean, in the name of rewarding promptness uh, for everyone who turned up at midday, we might um, we might crack on. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for coming to the housewarming info session. Um, for those of you who I haven't met before, my name is Phil Spencer uh, and I work in the cultural programs um, team here at Waverley Council. Uh, I'm one of the co-festival directors for Bondi Festival. Uh, my pronouns are he and him and I am a white man in my mid-30s uh, with brown hair in the style of Morrissey 1986 and today I am wearing a black t-shirt. Um, so I was thinking... Michael, that, uh, Phil, you've I, gone quiet. Can't hear you. Oh, I've gone quiet. What happened? Oh, I don't know. Can anyone else? Can everyone else hear me? No. Oh, okay. Well, I will use my um, theatre training to project. If um, if you still can't hear me, uh, just let me know. Um, so I was going to go around. We weren't sure how many people would come. I was going to go around and, and sort of introduce ourselves. That seems unnecessary now because there's lots and lots of you here. Um, so. Uh, also joining us today is Rachel Chant, who's the other co-director of Bondi Festival. She's waving there. And also our fabulous colleague, Jessa Lacqua. Um, so I want to start by acknowledging that today I'm Zooming you from Gadigal land, and I want to pay my respects to elders past, present and future. Um, you'd have seen it come up, but we're, we're recording this today. Um, that's most basically just because there are a few artists who told us they couldn't come today and they would have found this useful. So we're going to record it. We'll pop it up on the Bondi Festival website and it's just going to be there for the next little bit for other artists to have a, have a listen to. Um, there's also going to be a live transcript. So if that's useful to you, then you um, should be able to click the bottom button. Um, and that will also be available um, early next week on the festival website as well. Um, so some quick front of house. I mean, we're all very au okay with Zoom etiquette now. So um, if you're happy to pop yourself on mute and feel free to turn your camera on or off, however you feel comfortable. Um, and really, I mean, there's a lot of people here, so I'm probably not going to do too much talking. We wanted to use this as an opportunity to um, ask field specific questions and hear from you about things that you weren't sort of sure about in the information we've put out there about house warming. Um, so I'm going to assume sort of everybody has read the festival info website um, about house warming. So if not, Rachel's just going to pop the link in the chat now. Um, and really, I'll, I'll give a, a sort of brief summary. There's no point in me sort of regurgitating all of that to you. And then we want to just uh, open up the floor for questions. And how we'll do that is if you use the raise hand icon, then we'll make sure we sort of get through everyone. Um, and we'll try and be as prompt as we can, because I'm sure it's lots of people's lunch breaks. Um, Rachel, if I forget anything, or if I'm talking too quickly, just wave your hand at me. Um, so Okay, so the Bondi Pavilion, as I'm sure many of you know, has been having a fabulous facelift and it's due to be uh, reopened in June, July of this year. Um, and so at Waverley Council, we saw a sort of rare opportunity, I suppose, to um, invite artists into a building that wasn't yet sort of fully operational for the wider local community and, and the sort of general public. So we devised um, housewarming which uh, is gonna be a four week window, I suppose, in the year, in which ideally we would love to support around six projects for a residency um, in, in the Bondi Pavilion itself. Obviously different art forms uh, use creative residencies in different ways. And so we've tried to keep the application process as open as we possibly can, because I'm sure each of you are approaching what a residency might be from a different sort of um, lens, depending on what you do. Um, and we've tried to basically share as much information as we have about a building that's not yet open. So I'm sure there might be some questions we have the answers to, and I'm sure there might be some questions we would love to know the answers to ourselves. So we'll see what, um, what gets thrown our way. So um, we wanted to use the housewarming project to um, give, um, we, we wanted to hear from the artists, like from you guys about what was useful for a residency. So like that's, we kept it, you know, you can choose between one and four weeks. You can tell us what space you want to use. We sort of, we wanted to try and tailor a residency program um, from, from the perspective of the artists rather than from what we had. So um, the idea generally for housewarming is that we're interested in new ideas. So we want you to pitch us a brand new project or something that's been simmering away, but that you haven't necessarily had a chance to investigate or kick about. And we also want to make it a place where artists can create, uh, focus on their own creative practice. So um, 
I suppose the big thing is that the residency program isn't necessarily about creating a new work or finishing something. Uh, it could be very much about starting a project or, or spending some time um, focusing on a kind of particular line of inquiry in your own artistic practice that you haven't had um, the opportunity to do. Um, so in short, when the applications close, and like I said, we're going to get a whole different range of artists pitching us things, um, they're going to close at the end of this month. We will have an industry panel of peers assess those applications, um, and then we will, yeah, find the most suitable projects. Um, and we assess those against the selection criteria that you can read about on the website. Um, and so all going to plan the timeline of this is quite quick. We're going to close submissions in January. We'll let you know in March whether you've been successful or unsuccessful. Um, and then we will, yeah, invite some artists into the building for a period of time. Um, so re really, that's all I wanted to say at this point, um, because I'm hoping that you guys, like I said, will ask us some questions we have thought about and hopefully ask us some questions we haven't thought about. Um, so why don't we why don't we use the hand emoji and people fire away and Rachel and I will, will answer any questions that you might have. Um, Oh, unless I've covered off on everything, and that's far more succinct than I thought it would be. Oh, cool. Yeah, okay. Oh, I can see a hand emoji. Okay, let's start with Felicity Nickel. Hello, Felicity. How are you? I'm good. How you doing, Phil? Very good. Uh, firstly, thank you um, to yourself and Rach and uh, to Waverley Council. This sounds like such a cool pro program and project um, and it's exciting to be offered. So cheers for that. Uh, I wanted to know um, a little bit more around the artist stipends and then in terms of the, the range of um, timings that that is possible you said between I think one to four weeks whether or not it's expected it would be a, a full-time commitment or whether or not there's some flexibility within that and then something that I'm sure is a, a very silly question is there any possibility of parking um around the I love it flick you've yeah. gone with the parking straight away let's love go it. let's love do it, it. <laughs> Um, okay, we'll, we'll start with, the, as a trifecta, we'll start with the stipends. Um, so yeah, we've written stipends and I suppose, full disclosure, we didn't write the number next to that last year because we were waiting to hear back about um, a RISE application, which I'm sure the rest of the world was waiting to hear back about. Um, so um, where we've landed with, with that, I suppose, is I suppose like any, um, I suppose like any funding round, round style initiative, we essentially have a pot of money and we're going to try and support six projects. So what that actually looks like is, is dependent on, on the projects, but a rough guide um, is that ostensibly an individual artist will, will be eligible for $1,000 per week. Um, and a group of artists can apply, will basically be eligible for up to $3,000 per week. So um, yeah, if you're an individual artist and you're applying for one week, you will re receive a stipend of $1,000. And then all the other permutations from that um, is, is sort of partly the, the jigsaw that our assessment panel will be putting together as it, as it comes. Um, and so, yeah, like we said, we want to hear from artists about what's most useful. So we've said that you can, you know, obviously if you're, you know, if, if you're a sort of theater company, for example, you know, you know, probably a week or two weeks is a more suitable creative residency period. If you're a visual artist, we're assuming you might want one, two, three or four weeks. So we want to sort of, we really want you to, as uh, we really want you to pitch us what is most useful for your project. You know, don't, don't, don't necessarily apply for four weeks because that's, you know, um, the maximum you can apply for. It, it sort of really, and I think that's one of the assessment criteria is sort of what is the benefit of this residency for this specific project? So the clearer you can be with our assessment panel about we've asked for this because of X, Y, and Z in our, you know, project, then the, the stronger the application will be. Um, you, flexibility, yeah, that's an interesting one. I think at the moment we have said um, the residencies are sort of nine to five, which I think is partly a, a sort of practical, building component but i don't think you should be dissuaded for example if you were like we need we would love to come in you know for three fridays or, or for six days across a period of time depending on what your project is um i would say yeah t tell us that's what you require and then like i said we'll figure out the jigsaw of that um there's there's something i suppose um there's something neat and tidy about having um 
you know, four blocks. But I think we also want to try and create um, an atmosphere where there are different artists in the building at different times as well. So we're hoping there can be some sort of opportunities to meet other artists and, and sort of, you know, do that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, again, I think you, you, you articulate to us what's most useful for the project. And if the commitment of artists or the nature of the work is that, you know, it's not quite as simple as coming in for one week or two weeks, then let us know. Um, parking, am I going to body swerve that one? I don't know. Um, Jess? <laughs> um, I, I, I might take that on notice. I think um, there, there are two options. The, the one option is we will be able to get you free parking and the other option is we won't. <laughs> and I, I've, I've got to put my hand on my heart and say, I don't actually know the answer to that right now, but I can take it on notice and we will add the updated parking information to the website. Um, Thank you, Phil. Shortly, Flick. Perfect. Um, okay, and uh, Aaron Thomas, Thompson? Uh, g'day everyone. Um, my question is more to do with around the types of um, art or artists that you're hoping to attract or willing to look at. So for example, is it, um, is it 3D, is it sculpture, is it 2D, painting, photography? Would you consider events, live, interactive? Is it all on the table? How broad of a definition of art and artists are you um, looking at? Yeah, I mean, I think your phrase all on the table is probably appropriate. Um, yeah, we, we, like I said, we're trying to keep the residency as open um, a slate as possible rather than sort of dictating what art forms. I mean, I think the um, one of the only kind of requirements, I suppose, would be that we are keen to have artists physically on site um, in, in the spaces. That's part of the sort of rationale. So it's not to say that, for example, you couldn't be a digital artist or working in that space, but there's something that we think is desirable for us about having the artist there in the building. Um, you know, of course, a, a project may involve someone zooming in. Obviously, we're all very au okay fait with that now. But I think the principal artist or, or artist on, in a project we would love to sort of have on site and then other than that, other than that sort of requirement, I think we are genuinely interested to hear what, um, what work people are already making. So we're, we're all ears at that point. Rachel, do you have anything to add to that? I feel like that. No, I think other than, uh, so long as it meets the program objectives and themes and the selection criteria, I think that's sort of, it's quite broad and it's quite broad for a reason. Got it, thanks. Um, Elaine Morell. Eliane. Eliane. Yes. Sorry, just, yeah, it's Eliane. Thank you. I was just trying to um, unmute myself. Um, so, um, can we use uh, the theatre? Yeah, absolutely. So the, th the theatre is one of the spaces listed in the possible residency spaces. Um, so yeah, for those of you who are familiar with the theatre, 230 seat venue, it's, it's had a, it will have had a face list. Um, we, we haven't seen it yet, but yeah, we absolutely would love a team, depending on what comes in, we, we, we would love to have a team in there um, for as, as some combination as part of the residency. Okay, great. And and um, and so if if for example we were to do uh, a residency where we did a creative development over a couple of weeks or three weeks, and but at the end of that we aimed to present that that work to to an audience in the theatre, would that be like something? Yeah, we could... I, I think the um, I think the differentiation for the residency is. Uh, one, you don't have to have any public outcome if that's not important to your project. Uh, mm -hmm. But if, if, if part of the process is having a showing, I don't yes. think, um, I think we're, we're sort of leaning more towards sort of showings, readings, sharings, work in progresses. Um, yes. Then absolutely, that's something that we're keen to facilitate for artists. Right. If that's, if that's, um, you know, if that's a genuinely useful part of the process, but I would say to any kind of like theatre people applying as well, that that's not a prerequisite. Um, but yeah, we would yeah. love the idea of sort of readings or showings or sharings or Q&As with artists where we invite um, a few audience members in um, to sort of have a sticky beak at what people have been working on, absolutely. Excellent, fantastic. And uh, and so, so, sorry, that would include then if we wanted to use any lighting or sound or whatever in the theatre, then that would include that technical people who are available for that or yeah so I think it's about yeah it's about articulating in your application that we definitely want to do a showing and as a result you know um we would need a, a theater technician and then I think yeah. it's about sort of who who in your team is you know 
I think we wouldn't be able to provide you a lighting designer or a sound designer, no. but we would be able to have a discussion about sort of what technical requirements you might need to have that showing and, and make yeah. And, um, and one of the other things that you mentioned in the application was that you would like to see collaboration across, you know, the different groups. But I, I was kind of wondering how we can do that when we don't know necessarily who's going to get it <laughs> or who's applying. Yeah, I think, um, I think what we mean by that is I think part of when we've figured out who the projects are is that we're going to sort of schedule just, just kind of informal, like, mm -hmm cups of tea and hellos and, and encourage artists to sort of not necessarily uh, like, you know, create a work together, but we would just love to extend the kind of um, notion of sort of uh, critical dialogue and just a, a bit of a collaborative atmosphere in the building. If not, you know, if not necessarily making work together, it may be more about sort of popping in to see what someone else is doing or just checking in with the other artists in the building about how they're going. Um, so that's, that's one element of the sort of, um, uh, the, the successful residencies and then the other element in the application is we're keen to hear projects that um, where the artistic practice is already collaborative where you're make, making work that is um, by its very nature somewhere between sort of genres or, or what have you so they're they're the sort of slightly two different things there great excellent all right thank um, you Di Smith. hello Di Smith. Hello, Phil Spencer. Hello. thank you Eliane I think you've you asked a couple of the questions I was going to ask um, but I have a couple more. One is, if you like the application and the pitch, is there then going to be a bit of back and forth if, say, the timings that we want don't fit your jigsaw puzzle or the number of people don't fit your jigsaw puzzle? Will there be some backwards and forwards so we might be able to fit in with what your limitations might be? Yeah, I think... Um... I think absolutely the, the, the nature of, I mean, we're going to probably get a lot of applications and we're going to yeah. like a lot of them. And I think, um, I think the nature of selecting what those final successful projects are, you know, we may come back and say, you've asked for four weeks, but we, we probably only have three and this. And, and so there will, there'll definitely be an element of that, I would say. Um, so I think we, I suppose what we're saying is sort of present to us your best case scenario of what a great residency looks like for your process. And then, you know, and then we may come back and be like, oh, that room isn't going to work. But what do you feel about two weeks in this room? And, and there will be um, some negotiating, I'm sure. With, Great. With so we'll massage it all to to fit. Um, and just just one more one more question. And this goes to what Eliane was asking about with uh, technical things and the theatre and how finished do we anticipate the building will be? And will the artists be the only people in the building? Is it uh, like an enclave and my understanding was that the building wasn't actually open at that stage, but you were activating the building with the art first. How, what's this, how will it be? Yeah. I mean, Rachel, you're nodding vigorously. Why don't you not? <laughs> so the, the, the idea is I, that the uh, two things, one, you're in completely right. So the idea is the, the building won't be open, but the artists that are the housewarming artists will be the only people in the building. Okay, great. Um, the idea, so there won't be public milling about. Mm -hmm. There's a chance that there will be somebody working on the bar upstairs or like just as, as an example, that there still might be some workings going on around the building itself. So it yep. won't be... Um, it won't be its own little artistic bubble, but we're going to try to make it as, its own little artistic bubble as much as possible. Um, but the venues themselves, the venues that are available to you, as far as we're aware, everything's going to be finished and ready and good for artists to be in it. So That's great. Um, and, but it's, it's not a, the general public won't, the building's not open as such. This is like no, a free no. thing. So Thank this you. Is, yeah, this is our chance to sort of get artists in first before everyone else sort of has the opportunity to when we open the doors for the festival. Yeah, and, and also I suppose partly on that, it's that although the building will sort of be finished and ready for some residencies, there are other sort of functional things that the building needs to achieve before the public can come in. So it sort of, it gives us a little bit of time to finish those things as a wider building as well. Um, but, but that said, we do think we will be able to facilitate like Eliane was talking about, you know, an invited audience or, or, invi or you know, an open studio element or, or things that are a bit more controlled in terms of where audiences are, or, or punters are, are walking around. Um, Fantastic, thank you. No worries. Um, Sally. Hi, thanks, Phil. Um, quick question. Um, is the program 
uh, prioritising Waverley residents, right, Waverley artists? Well, yeah, on the, one of the selection criteria is absolutely that we're looking for local projects. I mean, it's a, it's a call out that is, uh, I mean, I suppose it is a nationwide call out technically, though we can't pay travel and accommodation for ice. So we're assuming that sort of New South Wales based artists will and Sydney based artists will be applying. Um, but yeah, of course, like, like a, you know, with all the things we do at Waverley, we are keen to, um, you know, support our local artists. Um, though, you know, th though I'm sure there will be a combination in those final six projects, but, but absolutely um, <laughs> getting some of our locals in is, is a priority. Okay, um, that's great. Um, second one is, if the if the project has a fair degree of community engagement, is there um, a possibility of working with Waverley Council staff or resources to facilitate that particular engagement? Yeah, I think how um, I think how we try to articulate on the website is sort of. Mm -hmm. um, uh, whatever resources we have available to us, we're really happy to share with artists. Mm -hmm. Though I suppose we don't want to um, try and sort of promise on things we can't deliver on in terms of, you know, we won't be able to give you a librarian for a whole day or something. Sure. You know? sure, sure. Um, we're really excited. The, the Bondo Pad will open with a story room, which is this new exciting sort of yeah. digital um, storytelling space that will be there. Um, and I, I suppose the way we put it is sort of like, if an artist is in the building, they're like, oh, I'd really love to know X, Y, and Z, then I think as a council and a cultural programs team, we'll be able to hopefully, you know, in, do some introductions, pass some emails along and sort of hopefully bridge that gap between community and artists where mm -hmm. possible, though, though not necessarily be a sort of community liaison role. Sure, or, sure. No, I just, I was just curious because it, and the other, I guess the other thing leading on from a little bit what Eliana and I were talking about, but if, if a part of your process is to get kind of, community um, feedback on the pros on the pro project is that something that would be encouraged or is that too much you know out of your kind of remit oh well I mean it depends on your project I think yeah one thing we've said in the application is we're really interested in artists who are making work that are uh, involved community participation or in engagement in some way mm -hmm. so if, if, if you have a project that, that is in that vein then we absolutely want to hear about it and then I suppose we're interested to hear from artists what what does community engagement or community feedback yeah, or community yeah. discussion look like for yeah, you? Yeah, and and yeah. so, you know, yeah. I suppose we, we're, we're sort of all ears in terms of how that could work. And we're yeah, keeping right. Fantastic. That. So you're yeah. quite open. That's great. That's all yeah. Great. Thank you. Beautiful. Um, Charlie. Hi there. How are you? How are you? Um, so just a question, like I know you touched briefly on like how it's a broad um, spectrum for people wanting to come in and stuff, but so I'm a photographer and I create basically like photos that look like paintings. So it's art that I would represent in a gallery or something. So um, like, are you guys accepting sort of gallery style um, submissions or does it need to be more sort of interactive for the, the viewers and stuff? Um, no, I mean, I suppose when we say um, interactive, obviously, sort of lends itself maybe to more of a, a live or some visual arts. But yeah, exactly. I think, though, we are also interested in work that engages in the local area in some way. So, yeah. um, it, it, you know, there doesn't have to be a, a sort of physical interactive element to the artwork. Um, though I suppose it's just about with, with a sort of, you know, with your art form, just sort of articulating to us, um, yeah, how having that residency will benefit that that you know, particular project or, or series of photographs. And, yep, definitely. Cool. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, yep. That's cool. all right. Thank you. <laughs> also, just to mention that, like, community participation and engagement is only one of our themes. You know, not every single project needs to have that um, built into it. Yes. Thanks so much. Um, all righty. Uh, Alex. Oh, Alex, sorry. sorry. Oh. oh. Hey guys, so you've, you've, you've kind of touched upon this, but I have two questions. There's a small group of us that are applying together. Two of us live in Randwick and two of us live in Bondi. My first question is, would if we put it under the Bondi address, would that be more likely to get selected? And my second question is, um, are you able to share with us the exact selection criteria um, that would more likely get the project accepted? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, um, you know, there is there isn't really a postcode bias in, in like by saying we will be we will be looking for artists who um, 
sort of engage in the local area, who live in the local area, but it's it's absolutely, you know, Randwick isn't too far away. I don't think there's any, there'll be no problem sort of whose name is on the application in that respect. Um, and then absolutely, yeah, so Rachel put in the chat the link to the Bondi Festival page, which has um, all of the housewarming info. And if you click through to eligibility and assessment criteria, um, that tells you, you know, all, all the things you need to be eligible to apply, uh, to the practical things. And then our four assessment criteria, which is that you need to align with the themes and objectives of the fest, um, of the program. It has to show that it's a quality project with kind of um, a track record with the artists involved. It has to show that there is a potential for the project to have future programming it, as part of Waverley Council events or programming. like, so I suppose, to speak to that, we, we're interested in supporting things that we hope will grow over the next two, three years that we might be able to see come back as finished projects or artworks. And the last one is, it's just really important to us that you benefit the, um, you articulate how the residency will benefit the project. Like, it's obviously a given that all artists would like some time and some money, but it's sort of like, you need to really sort of articulate why now with this project at the stage we're at, it's vital that we get this residency and there, there'll be the really strong applications that come through. Okay. Okay. Thank cool. you. No worries. Are there any other hands raised? Oh, is there a message here? Uh, there's a message here that says the residencies are across four weeks of May and June. What happens if the Bondi Pavilion is not ready yet to greet us? Um, that is a great question. I mean, I've seen enough episodes of Grand Designs to know that that is um, a possibility. No, um, I think the, the latest, um, you know, report back from, from the side of council that, that deals with the building works is that um, we are confident that, that we're going to be able to deliver on these um, how confident you can be in, in 2022 about anything, I'm not entirely sure, but, but um, we, yeah, we're forging ahead because it's, you know, it's looking very strong that we'll be able to be in that position. Um, all right, any other specific questions? And, and you know, you can, uh, yeah, if there's anything like small or very specific about your project you'd like to ask us, then, um, you know, now is the time. All right. Sorry, just okay. No worries, Helen. It's me. It's Ah, you, I can't quite hear you. No. Is that better? That is better. Great. Um, so it strikes me that, so um, all types of art are allowed, you said, but it strikes me that it's more based on sort of visual or performative art, and I wondered whether writing was included? Um, yeah, no, I mean, uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. If, if you, um, and I think particularly to that end, um, we see the value in, you know, in, in the kind of literature side of the submissions. And again, to sort of reiterate that it's not about finishing anything. So we don't expect someone to sort of come in and say, I'm going to finish my book or whatever. But like, if you're like, I'm an artist, here is this project I'm working on a week or two weeks or whatever will be useful for me and my project. And your project can speak to those selection criteria and our themes and objectives then absolutely that will be a strong um, application, yeah. And you could sort of put something on the wall to show your crazy schematics if someone did need to see something that yeah, but, No, no, but I suppose I want to reiterate that there's, there's no pressure to share anything at right. all. Like, if you come in, you do your residency, we say hello and you leave, great. I mean, we might ask for a photo of you at your desk looking studious, but other than that, <laughs> um, it's, a, it's about us really trying to have a, an artist articulate to us what is most beneficial to their process, yeah. Fantastic, thank you so much. Oh, right. um, Felicity. Hello again. I just wanted to clarify, it said applicants had to be 18 years or older, um, which is fine, but if the project you're doing involves people younger than that, is it possible to, is it okay to bring them in? I am going to say uh, yes, in the sense that if you're the lead artist on the project and then you're engaging um, and you're working with young people on it, um, I'll, I'll triple check that for insurance reasons, but I, I think, um, yeah, it's more that sort of, you know, if you're not 18 with an ABN, an Australian citizen, then we can't give you the money. Yeah. Um, but if there is a, if there is a project that involves you, yeah, absolutely. And I know that's part of what you do, then um, I think that's absolutely fine. Yeah, and, and great. Thank you. Um, any other questions while we're here? All 
right. Well, um, oh, hello, sorry, Chairman Deacon. What stage will the music studios be at? Recording operation? I have one, but I don't know how to put the hand up. Oh, that's all right. Um, we'll, we'll take that and then I'll come back to Gemma, your question in the chat. Is that Jan? Yeah, Jan. Hey, Jan, what's your question? Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. I, I sent it through the chat, but I, I uh, don't know if you got it and I don't know how to put the hand up. Um, I'm still working that out. Um, my question was about noise in the studios. Given there's nobody except artists there, what's the limit? Um, I, I, as in volume of sort of instruments and things? Yeah, I was thinking if I was to use a sander or sand by hand, you know, an object, if, if I was... Oh, yeah, yeah. So if there was an electric sander or something like that, what sort of noise can you make in, in the studios while you're there? Not that I have to, but... No, no, no. That's a great question. Um, I think I'm going to take that one on notice and, and ask. I think the residencies are daytime, like nine to five. Um, at the moment, there isn't any evening access. So I think, you know, with that in mind, it, it sounds like you can probably make a fair bit of noise. Um, but um, I suppose, yeah, um, let me get back to... We, we can ask... Uh, Someone else at council who might know the answer to that. Jess? <laughs> on notice. <laughs> right, we'll take that one on notice, Jan. But I mean, you know, I suppose the building, um, you know, in its history, obviously, is like, you know, had all sorts of gigs and concerts and, you know, theatre shows blaring music out of it at various times. So I don't foresee there being a massive issue with that, but we might just check depending on what space that you're applying to be in um, that, you know, that's all right. Um, okay, just a couple more questions here. So, Gemma Deacon, what stage will the music studios be at? Recording operational rehearsal gear, also the pottery and other studios. Um, well, the, I mean, the answer is that they will be operational. Um, in fact, my colleague is here who might know more about the music studios, studios than I, Michael, if you wanted to jump in. But um, yeah, like we said, the, um, the, building, the building is not ready to be open to the public, but they will be ready for us to participate in them. So if you want to use the recording studio, it will be ready to use. Um, the pottery studios, similarly, you know, all the equipment will be in there. Um, you know, it's just not there right now, so we can't go in and show you it. Um, so yeah, if you're, if you're a musician and you're applying to the music studio, take it as a given that you'll be walking into a functional space and the same with the pottery studios. Um, so there's a few more here. In the studio, can you use electric sander? Okay, that was Jan, we did that one. What sort of tech support does a residency support, i.e. a project um, that speakers or does the artist need to organize their own? Um, technical support, yeah, can be negotiated with, with us, I suppose. You tell us what you require. If it's something very bespoke, then we, we probably would put that back on the project or the team, depending on what it is. Um, but if it's basic technical support or sort of, you know, we need a, we need someone to figure out how to turn this projector on, or we need someone to op a, a desk for us on specific times. You, you let us know, and, and we will um, we'll factor that into how we staff the residency. All right, and oh, another one: if we're doing a presentation in a the theatre, could it be outside the nine to five weekday time frame? Another good question, Rachel Chant. I think that's I think that's probably negotiable. What we're trying to figure out at the moment is what our access to the building will be outside of those hours. But I think if your best time for a, for a showing is at seven o'clock, and then say that in the document, and then we'll try our best to make it happen. We've sort of limited it to the nine to five at the moment because that's what we know we have access to, and we don't want to go promising things that we don't currently have. But um, let us know, like Phil said, um, essentially the, the motto of today is let us know what works for you and and we'll see if we can make it happen. Yeah, and uh, Pam, um, Pamela? Uh, that was good lip reading. Um, I just want to bounce off the back of Jan's question, which is um, if what kind of separation is there available for um, sound? So if he wants noise and I want quiet um, and we're not particularly choosing like a music studio, what kind of options might there be? Is that, is that a possibility to 
um, have that kind of audio auditory separation. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we won't be writing passive aggressive notes to Yarn to tell him to turn his sand at <laughs> There are, um, there are the, I suppose the, the residency spaces on offer, like the sort of footprint of the PAB is quite big. So, um, and, and, you know, like we said, we have, we are able to support hopefully six residencies. So we're not even going to be able to use all of those spaces probably. Um, so I think the reality is we'll be able to kind of match people where is best for, oh. um, for them in combination with other artists. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It is worth noting in your um, application, though, that if you if you really feel that silence is important to your process or important to the project, um, that's worth noting so that we can know not to put you in the room next to Jan Sander. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, thank you. <laughs> um, so just another quick question. Do you have a piano available in the theatre or the recording studio? There is not a piano in the theatre. Um, and that's a great question. I'll triple check if there is one in the recording studio. Um, I can't remember, sorry, Phil. Yeah, that's all right. So I've got parking, piano, um, noise in the studio. There These used to be a very old piano in the, in the music studios, but I've Lord knows what's happened to it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it may well have survived a renovation. <laughs> it's can't. probably not worth it, but we'll see. Um, so, not sure, but we can um, we can find out and update the website um, in the next couple of days with that information. But again, like Rachel said, you know, when you put in your application, be like, give me a piano, or tell us how you might get around that issue if there isn't one supplied. I love it that there's been questions that not one question about a pandemic, but we have had parking and pianos. So. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I was fully prepped on my COVID council response, but um, <laughs> piano. Um, is if there are there any more? Uh, are there any more for any more? Um, and I suppose yeah, just a reminder uh, that there is the artist opportunities at Waverley Council email. If between now and when you submit, you have any other burning questions or things you haven't um, asked today, then um, yeah, myself or one of the team will be monitoring that and. We'll try and get back to you very promptly. Um, it might be lovely to hear the COVID stuff. Oh, if, yeah. Sure. If you've prepared the COVID stuff, it'd be lovely <laughs> to hear it. Well, I um, it. yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose in short, the, the um, Waverley Council's vaccination policy is that you are to be fully vaccinated if you're to be in the building as an artist with us. So re really, that's the main piece of information at the moment. It's the end of January now. Um, obviously, various COVID protocols are going to shift like week by week. So um, obviously Waverley Council generally has a COVID safety plan for its staff and, and contractors who come in. So as you know, as we get closer to the time of the residencies, um, we will be letting all the artists who are involved know about exactly what the kind of steps are. Um, I, you know, I don't want to be too ambitious, but I think g given again the footprint of the pavilion, the amount of artists that we'll be engaging, I'm, I'm sort of, we are we're sort of confident that, you know, even in a world of sort of um, some more internal restrictions, we're going to be able to um, uh, go, go, go ahead with these residencies. Um, but yeah, at the moment, yeah, it, you have to be fully vaccinated. There's no wiggle room on that. Um, and the uh, exact COVID safety plans, I suppose, yeah, revised closer to the time, but all the usual sort of things at play that, that, that will come and go in the next few months, sanitizers, social distancing, face masks, et cetera. Um, but uh, yeah, that's all, all to come. That was it, that was, that's, that, imagine if I hadn't rehearsed it, what, how that would have come out. Um, a question from Laura is, are the studios able to be easily blacked out? Um, it's a good question. Um, I think so. I think so is the answer. Yeah, yeah, and depending on what the project is, there, there is definitely there are definitely sort of rooms and yeah, there are definitely options to having uh, blacked out spaces um, if that's something the project requires. <laughs> All right, any more for any more? Um,
Sorry, I have a question. I tried typing it, but I'm not sure if it came through. Um, so I'm a visual artist. If I'm working on a series of artworks that are reflective of um, Bondi and the pavilion, is there the possibility of them being housed or exhibited um, in the building at the end of the residency or is it just taking them all home at the end? Um, I mean, in the short term, like if part of the process is you'd like to have a sort of open studio element and, and show some of those works for an afternoon, for example, that's absolutely something that's... Um, something we would encourage or you know support if that was part of the process um but long term uh, i suppose the answer is no in, in the sense that the gallery space is uh sort of you know curated and sort of put together but i suppose if that was a project you were working on it's the sort of thing that we would love to you know see and then uh you know be pitched to, through the visual arts programming team to maybe come back at some point for a, for an exhibition but that, that's a slightly two-step process if you know what i mean yeah awesome all right thank you so much no worries. Um, Rachel, did I forget to mention anything? I don't think so. I think we've covered everything we, we have to cover. Um, well done. Great. Well done on the right questions being asked. Um, well, thank you so much for coming, everybody. It's, it's great to know. Uh, it's great to know we're going to get more than a dozen applications already. I mean, that's good. Um, and like I said, if there's any other questions, um, you can find that email on the Bondi Festival page. Um, and yeah, thanks for thanks for taking some time this afternoon to come in. And, and we are very excited about reading all of the applications that come in and um, and meeting you at some point down the line. Thanks, everyone. See you guys. Thank you.